In an earlier tutorial, we saw how a UTS test can be used to determine a number of different properties of a given material. And in particular, we saw how it can be used to find the yield strength, the ultimate tensile strength, and the elastic modulus. In this video tutorial, we're going to compare the UTS test to another test called a torsion test. Now before we look at the torsion test, let's just recap some of the key points to do with the UTS test. Now first of all on the left hand side we have a test piece and in a UTS test one end of that test piece is constrained and at the other end we're going to apply a force and that force is going to gradually increase. We see directly below the diagram that the stress acting on the test piece equals the applied force over the area. So if we're gradually increasing the force we're gradually increasing the stress on the test piece. We're going to continue increasing the stress on the test piece until it yields or moves into plastic deformation and then until it eventually fails or reaches its ultimate tensile strength. One of the key points to note here is that stress is force divided by area or cross-sectional area of this test piece. And the reason why when we have direct loading the stress is force divided by area is because that stress is going to be evenly distributed throughout the cross section of the material. And as we'll see in a moment, that differs from the torsion test. As we place that test piece under an increasing stress due to the increase in the applied force, what we notice is that the test piece stretches or it changes length. And we can make a note of that change in length in order to determine the property of the material known as the elastic modulus. And elastic modulus is effectively the stiffness of the material. The higher the elastic modulus, the stiffer the material. The lower the elastic modulus, the more elastic the material is. But it's important to point out that that's only during the elastic deformation phase. It doesn't cover plastic deformation. So let's relate some of those points to our torsion test. And a torsion test is similar in that one end of the test piece is going to be fixed. Except this time, instead of placing the test piece under a linear load, instead we're going to apply a turning force, which is more commonly known as a torque. So we're going to apply a torque to the opposing end of the test piece. Now as we apply that torque, the test piece is going to twist. And as with the ultimate tensile strength test, that torque is going to gradually be increased. And as we increase the torque, we would expect the deformation or the deflection of the test piece to increase. Now in the case of torsion, the way that we measure that deflection is as an angle of twist. So if you imagine we're looking at the end of our test piece, and let's say for argument's sake that we twist that test piece through an angle of 30 degrees. Now as we twist that test piece through 30 degrees, we get a deflection profile. And hopefully you can see that the deflection at the outside edge of the test piece is going to be greater than the deflection at the inside. In effect, the outside edge is being forced to move a greater distance. In actual fact, what we end up with is a neutral axis running through the center of the sample. And at that neutral axis, the stress is zero, whereas on the outside edge, the stress is maximum. So the reason this differs from the ultimate tensile strength test is because in the UTS test, to determine our stress, we divided by the cross section of the material. The stress was evenly distributed. And unfortunately, we can't do that in a torsion test. Now, this is a little bit beyond the scope of this unit, but it's worth mentioning just to help you to understand where these equations below come from. So what we have underneath, we have tor, and tor is the shear stress. Now when we calculate the shear stress, we have to take a number of different things into consideration. We have to take into consideration the torque that we're applying to the sample, T. We have to take into consideration the radius of the test piece. And the reason we take the radius into consideration is because our stress is maximum on the outside edge. Therefore, if we want to determine the maximum stress on that test piece as it's twisting, we need to use the radius of the test piece. And finally, we have something at the bottom here, J, which is the polar second moment of area. Now, as mentioned, this is beyond the scope of this tutorial, 
But the important thing is we don't have an even distribution of stress. Therefore, we can't just divide by the cross-sectional area of the material. We have to take into consideration that that stress isn't even distributed. So the final equation that we have at the bottom there relates to something called the modulus of rigidity. So in order to determine our modulus of rigidity using a torsion test, we need to record a number of things. We need to record the torque acting on the sample. We need to know the length of the sample and the polar second moment of area of the sample. And we also need to know the deflection or the angle of twist as we discussed earlier. So the most important things to remember is that when we carry out an ultimate tensile strength test, we're determining a number of things. We're determining the ultimate tensile strength and the yield strength of the material. And we're also determining the elastic modulus. However, when we conduct a torsion test, we're establishing some different things. We're determining the ultimate shear strength of the material rather than the ultimate tensile strength. And rather than determining the elastic modulus, we're determining something called the modulus of rigidity, which relates to shear rather than direct loading. So by conducting the two tests on the same material, we can analyse the difference between direct strength and shear strength. And we can also analyse its differences in elasticity under direct and shear loading. So both tests can be used to determine different properties of the material.